Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thanks a lot for checking today's video out. Today guys, we're gonna be talking about braided line. We're gonna talk about everything you need to know about braided line. I'm gonna go through every pound test of braided line that I use and sort of give you guys the application for it and when I think it's the best to use and when I think it's not the best to use. So I think this is gonna be some really good info on, on braided line. And guys, before we start, I just wanted to remind you about our September sale on my signature series, uh, RB2 series solar bat sunglasses. Uh, if you get a pair in the month of September, you get them at 30% off. Um, I'll put the link in the description if you guys like to an order pair. And also, um, if you have a purchase of over $56 for every purchase over that, you get a grab bag pull of solar bat sunglasses uh, valued at $30. So really good deal on getting you some awesome solar bat sunglasses here. Again, link in the description there. Okay, guys, braided line. We'll talk about that a little bit. This is um, th this is something that um, I don't think it gets talked about enough because braided line is such a radical departure and a radical difference from monofilament and fluorocarbon. It's a specialty line. There's certain situations that it's designed to excel in, and there's other situations that you don't want to use it. So. What I sort of want to do in this video, I want to sort of go over the different braided line. I use nothing but the Seaguar Smackdown braid, and I use the gray stealth color here, which is sort of invisible. Um, we're going to go over that, and I'll give you the reasons why with that. Now, you see a big trend out there, guys. A lot of people use that bright yellow braided line. You see all the Elite Series guys braid to fluorocarbon with the yellow line on it. If you've watched my videos uh, before, you know that I, I don't use braid to fluorocarbon. I usually either use straight fluorocarbon or straight braid. I don't like the braid to fluorocarbon. We've done a lot of videos on it, but um, I don't use the yellow simply because it's so visible. And I there's nothing that's gonna convince me that if you're fishing in water clarity that's like four foot of clarity, and you've got some yellow line going down into the water, even if you have a six or 10 foot leader, the, the fish are not aware of that yellow piece of line up above their head there. I just, I, you know, people say, well, Randy, how can you say that? Because they're catching 20 pound bags of smallmouth or 22 pound bags of smallmouth at St. Lawrence River. It's like, well, if they use straight fluorocarbon, they'd probably catch a 23, 28 pound bag of, of smallmouth. I just don't believe it helps you. I think it hurts you more than anything else. That's why I'm a big believer in the low vis still gray, gray right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I've got five different pound tests of line and braided line that I use. And that's all I use as far as uh, all my fishing. And I'm going to go through light to heavy, sort of give you the applications that I use it in. Now, the first one, guys, would be the 15 pound test braided line here. Now, the times that I use the 15 pound test braided line is for a float and worm. Uh, 15 pound on there, it's super strong and you can cast 15 pound braid a mile. And a lot of times with the floating worm, um, you, you definitely need that strong hook set with a spinning rod. And that's why I use the braid because there's no stretch on it. Now in this situation, um, sometimes I will use a swivel. I'll put like, a, I'll, I'll, I'll tie the braid to the swivel and then I'll tie maybe a little piece of fluorocarbon uh, to the swivel leader on there and especially if I'm fishing it down just a couple inches like that. And a lot of times I feel that that gives me a little bit of an advantage where the straight braid isn't quite as visible to them. But most of the time I'm fishing a floating worm pretty much close to the surface. So I'll just tie it straight to the uh, braided line with the 15 pound test. Um, that's pretty much the only time that I will use the 15 pound test braided line. I don't really use it in any other situations. Now the next one guys would be 20 pound test braided line. The 20 pound test braid is what I'll use on a spinning reel for like a fluke. If I've got something a little heavier, like a fluke is a little bit meatier, it's a little heavier than a floating worm. So I feel like I need a little bit, you know, larger diameter line. And the same deal with the fluke guys, or the soft stick bait like that, any type of soft plastic jerk bait, um, I'll either tie it straight on it with the 20 pound test, um, if I'm fishing it, you know, close to the surface, and if I'm trying to get it subsurface a little bit, again, I'll put the about a foot and a half, two foot leader on there with the barrel swivel. I'll never, never use the braid to fluorocarbon straight. And the only reason that I'm using, or well, there's two reasons. There's the, the two reasons I'm using the barrel is the barrel will help reduce line twist because if you're fishing a, a fluke or a floating worm on a spinning rod, 
on straight anything, straight braid, straight fluorocarbon or whatever, it's going to twist your line because that bait twists a lot and the barrel swivel will really help eliminate that twist. But that's about the only time that I'm using 30 out there. Now the next one guys, I'm gonna talk about a little bit is the uh, 30, 40 and 50 pound test. The 30 pound test, um, there's two applications I use with 30 pound tests. Number one is fishing a small frog on the surface. Now, frogs come in a lot of different sizes, but when I'm fishing a, a smaller size frog, which some of them are a little bit smaller, I'll use 30 pound test braid um, on a bait cast reel with that. And the 30 pound is super strong and the smaller diameter allows me to throw that, uh, you know, a little bit smaller frog on it. And also if I'm fishing in Florida over some fairly thick vegetation or maybe around lily pads and I'm throwing something like a, some type of a, a, a boot tail swim bait where I'm fishing it just under the surface, the 30 pound test is a, is a good consideration for that. So that's what I use. Now, next guys is the 40 pound test. The 40 pound test is my hardcore um, frog fishing line. That's what I use for most all of my frogs. I'll use it on horny toads. I'll use it on the zoom frogs, that type of stuff. And also this is what I fish my big top waters on. If I'm using something like a whopper plopper or a big walking top water, something that's really big, I'll tie a straight 40 pound test on it as well as a buzz bait. So um, the 40 pound test, you're not gonna break it with 40 pound test line, yet the, the diameter is still, far, is still small enough you can get good cast, but yet the diameter is thick enough where you don't get the fluffs on it. If you try to cast braided line even on a smaller diameter, a lot of times you can fluff it if you cast it a little bit too hard. But if I've got one pound test that I use more than anything else, it would be 40 pound test. Topwaters, buzz toads, frogs, all that type of stuff is going to be with the 40 pound test. Even sometimes if I'm fishing muddy water, like muddy, muddy water where it's that much visibility and I'm fishing a big spinner bait, I may tie the big spinner bait on 40 pound test braid too. And finally guys is the 50 pound test. This is the heaviest I use. A lot of guys will go to 65 and I don't. Um, the 50 pound test is my mat flipping line. This is what I'm flipping. Um, matted vegetation, high sense, matted grass, Sometimes I'll flip it in reeds or cattails or super thick flooded gnarly stuff like that with big heavy jigs and big heavy weights. Um, I don't like the 65 pound. I think it's a little, I think the diameter feels a little too thick for me. It feels like I'm throwing rope. But so I use the 50 pound test for all of my heavy duty flipping situations. So that's pretty much guys. That's what I use the braid for out there. Um, again, it's situational. Um, how much I use it during the course of the year depends upon how much I'm fishing those techniques that I talked about. But again, um, I eat most of the time, I'm either using straight braid or straight fluorocarbon with the exception of using the barrel swivel on that fluke or the floating worm. So anyway, that's my two cents worth on it, guys. I hope it gives you a little insight there and we'll talk later. See you.